Assalamu alaikum, welcome to episode 9 of 10 Minute Taraweeh. And we start with our Fatiha fact. We have, after mentioning these names of God, a very important verse in the surah, Iya kana abudu wa iya kana stain. You alone we worship and you alone we ask for help. Worship is the essential attitude that we have to have coming from our side towards our Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Him comes the mercy, from Him come the favors, from us comes the ubudiyya through ibadah and being ibad and being servants and worshippers of Almighty God. Ibadah at its core is the utmost level of love with the utmost level of humility and lowliness before Almighty God. So when we have this, we find that we are doing our part. We have the covenant of servitude, which is responded to by the covenant of lordship. Coming now to juz number nine of the Quran, uh, we are still in Surah Al-A'raf, and we had mentioned um, that a number of stories of the prophets are mentioned here. And as a kind of com comment on uh, the entirety of these stories, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, expresses that if they had only believed how many good things they would have received. Why is it in fact that people turn away and reject his favors? In verse 96, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْا لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا وَلَكِنْ كَذَّبُوا فَأَخَذْنَاهُمْ بِمَا كَانُوا يَكْسِبُونَ And then we have the story of Moses of Musa alayhi salam which is so frequently mentioned in the Quran uh, coming from verse 103. And when we reach verse 128, we find uh, part of his difficulty was his own people, his own followers. He called them to, to steadfastness, but they responded with stubbornness, and yet he would call them again to hope. He said to them, قَالَ مُوسَى لِقَوْمِهِ اسْتَعِينُوا بِاللَّهِ وَاصْبِرُوا إِنَّ الْأَرْضَ لِلَّهِ يُورِثُهَا مَنْ يَشَاءُ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ So to be patient because ultimately God is on the side of the believers. As long as you are steadfast and you live according to His way, you will find the results that you uh, hope for, even in this life, not to mention the hereafter. Then uh, as we move on through the uh, surah, we come to verse 143 and here Musa is speaking directly to his Lord and asking him to be able to look upon his face, to be able to see him in this life and in his earthly body. The response is, you are not going to be able to see me. وَلَكِنْ انظُرْ إِلَى الْجَبَلِ فَإِنِ اسْتَقَرَّ مَكَانَهُ فَسَوْفَ تَرَانِي But rather he said, look at that mountain. And God was to reveal some of his majesty to that mountain and the mountain would not be able to bear it. Then what about this human body of ours? فَلَمَّا تَجَلَّى رَبُّهُ لِلْجَبَلِ جَعَلَهُ دَكًّا وَخَرَّ مُوسَى صَعِقًا فَلَمَّا أَفَاقَ قَالَ سُبْحَانَكَ تُبْتُ إِلَيْكَ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ So the, the position taken by uh, the Muslim scholars is that being able to see God is something which is reserved for the hereafter. As for in this life, we see the result of it uh, described here. Then in verse 156, there is the uh, importance of mercy, the centrality of mercy, uh, and the universality of mercy, where Allah has said, That I inflict with my punishment to whomever I will, but my mercy encompasses all things. And then in the following verse, there is a description of those who are the believers and those who are the pious. They are those who follow the messenger, the unlettered messenger, who is mentioned in the previous scriptures. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was prophesied in previous scriptures. 
الذين يتبعون الرسول النبي الأمي الذي يجدونه مكتوبا عندهم في التوراة والإنجيل So this is an important aspect of our engagement also with the previous scriptures. In verse 163 we have uh, the beginning of a description of what happened to some of the Bani Israel, the Israelites, when they uh, decided to transgress in the matter of the Sabbath which was mandated upon them. Uh, so they've tried to find a loophole in the law when they were told not to fish uh, or do any such activity on the Sabbath day. They decided to cast out their nets the night before uh, the Sabbath began, uh, began in order to gather the fish which were coming in large numbers on the Sabbath day. In this story we have three categories of people. The wrongdoers themselves, then the warners, those who rebuked them from that. And then you have a third group who we could describe as the bystanders. In fact, these bystanders did something worse and that they discouraged the warners from warning when they said, وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ لِمَا تَعْيُضُونَ قَوْمًا إِلَّهُ مُهْلِكُهُمْ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا قَالُوا مَعْذِرَةً إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So when they said, why are you bothering to uh, warn these people who are going to be destroyed anyway? The response was, we do so just to have an excuse before your Lord and perhaps they would indeed um, basically that they would receive the message and they would uh, go aright. Verse 187 reminds us the last day, the day of judgment, is something which is unknown. As frequently in the Quran, they are asking the Prophet, peace be upon him, to tell them when is the day of judgment. لا يجليها لوقتها إلا هو. Rather that knowledge is only with the Lord Subhanahu wa Taala, and He is the one who will make it known at the prescribed time. At the end of this surah, we have got an address, which is first of all to the unbelievers, and then also to us. وإذا قرأ القرآن فاستمعوا له وأنصتوا لعلكم ترحمون. When the Quran is recited. Then listen to it and give ear, be silent, in order that you may receive mercy. And this is spoken in the singular address to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and then to the believers. To remember God within ourselves with humility, with fear of Him and at different times of the day in order that our days are filled with the remembrance of God. We come then on to Surah Al-Anfal. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Yas'alunaka 'anil anfal qul al-anfal lillahi war rasul. They ask you concerning the spoils of war. Say they are for God and the messenger. And we have in these verses uh, a connection to what we just mentioned about listening to the Qur'an in verse number 2 إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ That the true believers are those who when God is mentioned their hearts tremble وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ And when his signs are recited to them or the verses of the Qur'an are recited to them they are increased in belief and in faith. After this we have uh, from verse 5 onwards uh, some verses related to the battle of Badr and this was the first battle which the Muslims faced with the polytheists of Mecca and they were granted victory in this battle, a decisive victory and yet we are reminded in verse number 17 that this victory is only from God. فَلَمْ تَقْتُلُوهُمْ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ قَتَلَهُمْ وَمَا رَمَيْتَ إِذْ رَمَيْتَ وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ رَمَا That it was not you who killed them or defeated them, but it was God who did so. And you did not throw when you threw, but rather it was God who threw. And this could refer to the arrows uh, that were pelted, or it could refer to other than that as in the commentary of the verse. Finally, for this episode, 
we come to our only hope. Our only hope is to be constantly seeking God's forgiveness. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَأَنْتَ فِيهِمْ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ مُعَذِّبَهُمْ وَهُمْ يَسْتَغْفِرُونَ In verse 33, that God Almighty would not punish them while you, O Muhammad, are among them, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But Allah will also not punish a people while they are seeking forgiveness from Him. وَأَخْرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رُبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ